This episode is brought to you by Skillshare. The first thousand people to sign up using the link in the description will get their first two months free. Japan, the birthplace of Hello Kitty, Super Mario, Sushi, and fetishes of a physical nature that seem wholly Japanese. It's a country renowned for walking to the beat of its own drum, a cultural oddity in some respects, but with a society that goes to great pains in being polite, civilized, clean, and deferent to customs. Walking around almost any city, you won't find trash on the ground, and you won't need to fear being harassed or beaten up for the way you look or for the few dollars in your pocket. Japan is on the whole smart, convenient, and safe. But then, it also has some of the most feared and formidable gangsters on the planet. Who are they? What do they do? That's what we'll find out in this episode of the Infographic Show, Most Dangerous Japanese Gangs. When we talk about gangs in Japan, we are mostly talking about what we call Yakuza, but this is a generic name or umbrella term given to various groups of gangs in Japan, like the West's Mafia. Sometimes these people that become part of this lifestyle call themselves Goduku, which translates as wicked or extreme path. In a recent Forbes story, we were told that the Yakuza, which goes back to the 17th century, call themselves Ninkyo Dantai, meaning a chivalrous organization. The media and police don't see it that way though, and they call these gangs Boryokudan, which means violent group. But who are these people? In a paper called History of the Yakuza from 2014, it's written that in Japan there are somewhere between two and three thousand gangs that we might call Yakuza. Forbes writes that in all, there are 80,000 separate Yakuza members, although different sources give wildly different estimates. These gangs belong to a number of conglomerates. You might think of these larger gangs as crime families, or even what the Mexicans call cartels. According to historians, some of the Yakuza like to romanticize their beginnings, comparing themselves to ancient master samurai known as Ronin, although others say the roots of Yakuza come from gangs that defended villages from marauding Ronin. It's more commonly thought that most of these past gangsters were merely men that peddled sketchy goods and ran gambling outfits, as the word Yakuza is actually related to gambling. They do have codes of conduct though, the past, and rituals associated with the past is important to Yakuza. In fact, some scholars tell us that Yakuza have an unwavering moral code, that they are makoto, or heroes, driven by money but also a will to do good. In that sense, we might call them moral gangsters, or sometimes ethical hitmen. That's one side of the tale though, and many of the Japanese public don't see it that way. Carrying on with our history lesson, one professor that has studied Yakuza tells us, like the Mafia in Italy, gang traditions that are still influential today in Japan had their origins within the feudal structure of the pre-industrial society. Outlaws and bandits emerged, but so did stories of Robin Hood type Yakuza. This seems to be a common theme in most cultures, the honorable criminal fighting oppression. We are told in Japan this was, and still is, a common thread, that the gangsters are neo-samurai that have basically put down their robe and donned a business suit. The sword is now a gun, but the principle is the same. But if you think dealing in prostitution, extortion, drug trafficking, smuggling, gambling, blackmail, and other shady businesses is honorable, well, that's up for debate. Are these modern day samurai really robbing from the rich and giving back to the poor though? We'll soon find out. First, let's look at the big four organizations in the Yakuza. They are the Yamaguchi Gumi, easily the largest and now split into two, the Sumiyoshu Kai, the Inagawa Kai, and Eizu Kosetsu Kai, the oldest group. These groups are well known to the Japanese people. They have large headquarters, known by the cops and everyone else. They work almost like a normal corporation, except much of their work is of a criminal nature. Let's have a look at the biggest of these groups, the Yamaguchi Gumi. First of all, like all Yakuza, there is a strict hierarchy. At the top, you have the boss, Oyabun or Kumicho, and you have his family, gang members or Kobun. They are all part of a hierarchy, having elders and youngers. Below the Kumicho is a senior advisor, and below him is the chief. Below them are the smaller gangs associated with the family, and these smaller gangs have their own bosses, Shate Gashira. By comparison, it's rather like the Italian Mafia. It's thought in Yamaguchi Gumi there are around 500 separate Yakuza groups. It's so large, the Yamaguchi Gumi is said to be the richest criminal family in the world by a long shot, with an estimated yearly net revenue of $80 billion. The group, which accounts for just less than half of all Yakuza, has its fingers in many, many pies. 
Yes, they might traffic drugs as most worldwide gangs do, but they also traffic arms, invest in and manipulate the stock market, have a large hand in Japan's huge pornography industry, build buildings, run gambling operations, and extort money. The group started as a labor union for dock workers in Kobe in the early 1900s, by none other than Mr. Harakuchi Yamaguchi. But today the boss is a man by the name of Kenichi Shinoda. He's been jailed for murder, been involved in Yakuza wars, and is seen as a great businessman having expanded the Yakuza during his reign. He believes, in spite of murder, the Yakuza is honorable. He's gone on record before, stating how many times Yakuza have helped the public, mainly after the Second World War and also after natural disasters. He's right, too, which is why perhaps the Japanese people put up with these shady businessmen who once were outcast scoundrels and gamblers. After the 1995 Kobe earthquake, around 1 million Japanese folks were left without a home. Who stepped up? First the Yamaguchi Gumi, and then all four of the Yakuza's main syndicates. After the massive tsunami in 2011, the Yakuza again came to the rescue of many people by offering housing and many tons of food. One journalist wrote, I'll remain endlessly fascinated by the charity of the Yakuza when natural disasters strike. It's such an idiosyncratic, paradoxical thing for a group of criminal syndicates to engage in. The Yakuza have a lot of rules, and if you break them, there are two main penalties you can receive. One is death, the other is expulsion with no way back into the world of Yakuza anywhere. For the lucky ones, they have a finger cut off, usually just above the joint. This practice is known as yubitsume. If you mess up again, off comes another finger until some people have few left. The offender cuts the finger himself with a really sharp knife called a tanto. He then wraps it up and hands it to the boss. In the past, this would weaken sword grip, but in the present, it's more of a symbolic statement. This has happened to a lot of people, some of whom have left the Yakuza and gone in search of a prosthetic finger. One clinic told the press in 2013, I started to see a gradual increase in people who were asking for prosthetic pinkies. They weren't the standard small, medium or large, but custom made pinkies. So yes, this is a strict group. It has inviolable laws, unlike most criminal organizations that are more chaotic, and most people abide by them. Are we talking about angels that fly over natural disasters, or shrewd men that order hits and run brothels? A bit of both, but it seems they are trying to clean up. No more drugs, either used or sold, was made law in 2011 by the Yamaguchi Gumi. You can read that on their official website and see their official logo and offices. They are trying hard not to kill each other or any of the public, though it does still happen. Today you have to seriously mess up in order to get whacked. You could almost compare it to the triads in Hong Kong, in that a blind eye is turned to illegal activity if blood stays off the streets. Even when the Yamaguchi Gumi split and the Kobe Yamaguchi Gumi was formed in 2015, there were few murders. Perhaps the most high profile murder was in 2007, when a mayor was whacked for not playing ball with a Yakuza boss. The groups are well aware that if business looks too messy, the government and police put you out of business, just as has happened with criminal syndicates all over the world. Perhaps the Yakuza are not just the richest gangs, but also the smartest. So what are these guys like? Well, Vice Magazine had a journalist spend a bit of time with some of the gangsters. Apparently, they like fine food, fine women, and exquisite tattoos. According to that interview, these smartly dressed men seem to think they've been maligned by the media relating to their image. They see themselves as upstanding gents. The public sees otherwise, says Vice. Many believe them to be a stain on the proud legacy of Japanese morals and decency. People don't want to talk about the Yakuza or acknowledge their existence. As for violence, these guys said the Yakuza prevent it, not start it. The Yakuza keep everyone in line. They can stop chaos, said one gang member. He said they help the young, tough love if you like, and if they step out of line they get in trouble. But that, he believes, is better than ending up in jail. The interviewee said the police and politicians are also corrupt and just envious the Yakuza has so much power. Lastly, what about those tattoos? What do they mean? We looked at a Japanese website for the answer and found out that you don't have to get tattoos if you are in the Yakuza. You might just get the name of your boss, or you might go for one of those beautiful body tattoos. Sometimes you just have outlines and no color. That means your journey is just starting. What about those koi fish? They symbolize strength and courage in times of adversity, following a myth that a koi fish swam up rapids in the Yellow River in China and turned into a dragon. A samurai picture is also common, and we don't need to explain why. You may also see these flowers, a chrysanthemum, a lotus, or a peony. Respectively, this might mean longevity, growth, and wealth. Animals each have their symbols as do monsters, the food dog mean protection, Water can symbolize change, while clouds or plants also have symbolic meanings. 
Colors mean a lot too. A blue dragon is gentle and forgiving, but a black dragon is wise. A severed head? Well that just means don't mess with me or you'll end up like this guy. They should always be hidden too. This year, a former boss of the Yakuza was arrested in Thailand as an old man, only because someone photographed his amazing tattoos and stuck the ex-gangster's photos online. Oh, and he was missing a pinky finger. It turned out the 72-year-old was wanted in Japan in connection with a murder. We might say that while the Yakuza can be dangerous, they might just be the most ethical and upstanding group of gangsters on the planet. As they are also the richest, Perhaps American, Mexican, Russian, Italian, and British gangsters might take a page out of their very colorful playbook. If you're as much of a fan of Japanese culture as we are, then we suggest taking a class called Comprehensive Essential Japanese for Beginners. This way, you will at least be able to understand some of the things in those subtitled anime shows we all love to watch. You can learn this and many more things by joining Skillshare, an online learning community with over 20,000 classes in design, animation, technology, and more. Premium membership will give you unlimited access to topics that will improve your skills and, in the process, your life. The first 1,000 people to sign up by visiting Skillshare.com Infographics32 or by clicking the link in the description will receive two months of Skillshare absolutely free. Join Skillshare and start learning today. So, what do you think? Is there such a thing as an ethical criminal? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called Most Horrific Crimes, The Italian Mafia. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time!